and happy Sabbath and happy Feast of Trumpets. As my journal put in, it's actually kind of a double situation there. So. Which means we are 14 days away from the Feast of Tabernacles, if I understand the timing correct. Is that correct? I think it's like two weeks. First and 15th. Yep. First and 15th, yeah. Even if I'm off by a day or two, at my age, time goes so fast, this week will go, the week will. You don't will. know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see it's knocked all day. Is that the end of your sermon? <laughs> That's right, Bill. Let me know. But it's funny, I like, the, I like the song you all picked. I Surrender All. Because I'm the title is, Don't Look Back. Is what I, I mean. I've addressed it, but now I'm addressing it with this topic with the idea of the Feast of, of Trumpets. And as usual, I start with quotes. Oh, by the way, Dell says hi. He sent something back to say hi. I meant to say it during announcements, but we'll say it now. Just make it quick. And he's doing fine overall. <coughs> so we're not to look back. I know people do this. I was listening to someone in the church saying they wish they were back in 1950s. Because society was better and all this, I went. Well, it may have been or may not have been, but you can't go back. But they, we looked back. My mother looked back at the fact wanted to be with my grandfather. I say grandfather, her father, but he had passed away in 1950 something. And it, you just can't. Do, you don't look back. You can't do that. And as usual, we start with quotes like Mindy Hale. She says, "Never run back to to what broke you." Once you made a decision, move on, don't look back. Your destiny will never be found in the rear view mirror. And I thought that was a pretty good one. You can't look back and think your destiny's back there. And since I drive all the time, I don't think my destiny's back there. I usually want to get farther in. And what General Washington said, we ought not to look back unless, unless, we, unless it is to derive useful lessons from the past errors and for the purpose for the purpose of, pro, of profiting by nearly broad experience so basically by experience or or you want to think of lessons and c.s lewis i like this one this is just a quick one i just liked it he said there there are far far better things ahead than what we any anything we left behind and that is true So the future has a great, even though the, the, we are told by society, future does not have anything to hold for us because it, it, schools teach us the world will die of heat or, and all this stuff and overpopulation. But there is a better future, and the Bible tells us that. And we know that, in, we know that by the Feast of Trumpets. The title partly came back from the fact came from a scripture in Luke 9. If you just want to go ahead and start heading that direction, I'll get there in a second. In Luke 9, I remember Tom Justice, I think, was the one who did this one a long time ago. I never even didn't know it exists. I was young. Luke 9, where he took the cost of discipleship. And he was taught and Jesus was confronted by multiple people, you know, say, Hey, I want to be your disciple. What do I do? And what? How am I turning that? I got it. In Luke nine five through six, or fifty seven through sixty two. So I drop a few numbers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I dropped a few numbers. Are you happy? Luke nine fifty seven through sixty two. Hey, I got it out that time. No, it's just too comfortable last night. You can tell when the feasts come around. It's, it, you don't have to run your air conditioning as much. It's nice outside. When I went to give him peace, I fell asleep. I admit, he should have went out there and said, Hey, young man, you're out there too long. My alarm didn't go off. But Jesus was confronted by various individuals and you know, I'm sure, they're sure the extreme isn't toward us, but it was it had a lesson to it. 
as he was as they were going to oh, let's see make sure I'm in the right spot I'm just going to read it out of my bible okay as they were going along the road someone asked I will follow you wherever you go and Jesus said to him verse verse 58 the foxes have their holes the birds of the air have their nests the son of man has nowhere to lie his head and anyway he said another said I will follow and permit me and then this one gives an excuse this one another one says then he said oh I'm sorry I'm thinking of something different here this individual said was told by Jesus to follow him and then Jesus said uh, the man comes up and says Lord permit me first to go and bury my father it'd be like me going to Jesus and going hey I want to follow you he says yeah you sound like you've got you're somebody I'm looking for oh well first I've got to do this you know I don't know I can't think I don't want to think of burying my father but you know I got to pay a bill who knows what and he, he said and then he says in verse 60 but he said allow the dead to bury their own but as for you go proclaim everything in the kingdom everything the kingdom of God and another said I will follow you Lord but first permit me to say goodbye to those at my household and this is when Jesus just finally says says in verse 62 which is really where I was going to go but it's interesting that he, the guy goes, yeah, I want to go home and go say bye to my family. And he's going, Ugh. I said, I can't think of an excuse of why I would tell Jesus I wouldn't follow him. That's why I'm just stopped. It's like if he said follow, I'd probably do it. But then realize we're full of the spirit of the Holy Spirit. And they're not. They're mortal. They think, oh, yeah, my father died. I got to go bury him, you know, or whatever. But in verse 62, it says, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking backwards, is fit for the kingdom of God. We can't look back. It's just something we cannot do. I mean, it's like it's like Lot's wife when they were told by those angels. That's the first example that came to mind when I read that. It's like it's like I'm not saying it's that extreme, but like Lot's wife. They're being told this city will be destroyed, period. It is evil, wicked, and they probably were aware of that to a degree, like we're aware our society is going downhill extremely fast. <laughs> I mean, it's extremely fast. And, you know, they're being pushed out by these angels, and then Lot's wife just one la had to have that one last glance. And we can't be that way. we got to keep our head forward, because he talks about somewhere that the plowman cannot look back. Because we did, I didn't understand this until somebody who was a farmer told me. If you look back, you could be doing this. Well, it's the same if you drive. You could be looking at something at a distance. And do that. I've done that. Like last night, when I was watching the clouds. I had to really watch what I was doing because it was a beautiful cloud. It was just broke in a circle with all the clouds around. I had to go dull. Focus on the road. <laughs> Keep an eye on that road because you will be off that road. And Lot's wife did also wasn't focused and like like plowing or driving, you've got to keep your eye on the kingdom. And Jesus gives us that prize in the, for in Matthew 6, 31, not prize, but the focus. Matthew 6, 31 through 33. We all know this one. Because in the Sermon on the Mount, he tells, tells us what to focus on. He says, there in, ver, in Matthew 6, 31 through 33, Therefore, do not, worry, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, and what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For, the, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So we can take great confidence while we're walking this life that God is aware that we're very physical. We need stuff. It's like the bargain I found at Coles where they had, like I was telling, the t-shirt, the not t-shirt, the dress shirt that has the shorts on it, four bucks. It was eight to ten dollars, it's four. That's not a bad deal. But God will take care of it in whatever way. But he's in verse 33 he says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and all these things shall be added to you. You will be taken care of. So if you focus on that road, God will take care of it. Is what he's saying. You don't have to worry about what you eat or drink. You know, like like Elijah, wasn't it Elijah where he the, the famine? He said there will be no rain for three years, and when the food ran out, birds brought him food after that. And in life, I recognize as a disclaimer that yes, we have things that were presented that is our goal. For example, when I was a young man, I was told to get married, which. I never did, but whatever. <laughs> but marriage is an honorable goal if that was your goal in life. If you want a good career, another thing I failed at, but hey, whatever. <laughs> but but we do have goals in life. To what? It's overrated. <laughs> I think my boss would agree with that since he's made it a career, and he said, "Oh my gosh, the thing wants to take every minute of your day." Well, it's another job. It's twenty-four hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm not saying when I say focus that we forget about our lives. Of course we take care of our grandkids. And we and I don't have any, but if you have grandkids or kids, of course you take care of your job. But like on the road, I can sit there and watch the world around me and still focus on the road, sorta. Depends how tired I am. <laughs> Depends how tired I am. <laughs> But overall, I have a tendency that I can watch the road and still be able to go where I need to go and focus. So I'm just saying that don't feel like, like a monk, like the Middle Ages, where you had to go into a cave and go, mm, and do all this and not, yeah, nah, you know. But when it says focus, just, you know, that's your primary thought of the day. That's why in the, in the prayer you hear Jesus said, when you pray, pray first. Thy kingdom come, that will be your will be done on earth and all that. It says that at first. I want to go to Philippians 3, 7 through 11. Paul explains how he felt about this. this. In Philippians, so go ahead and do it this way. Philippians 3, 7, But whatever things were gained to me, these things I count as a loss for the sake of Christ. That's why I like the song that said, I surrender all. He basically would say amen to that. Because that would be, he, said, he basically is saying here that he counts as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in the view by surpassing that in the view of surpassing the values of, of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them like rubbish, as that I may gain Christ. So Christ was his focus also. And that's true. You know, I value my books at home. One of these days, a fire is going to take them, or water, or I'm going to sell them, who knows what. I just like the knowledge in them more than anything else. And like the books, books themselves, it's neat. But they will also are counted as rubbish because eventually they will go away, you know. And But Christ is permanent. We know he's resurrected. And may it be found in him having righteousness. To, okay, so you want to go any further on that? Verse, verse 10. To jump to let's go down to verse 10 that I and it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being con conformed to his death I'm reading the King James now if by any means I have attained the resurrection from the dead his goal was that and you know in his life that was true if you went to Paul because he gave up practically every well I think he gave up everything he just traveled he was told to go and he went that's it. And sad everybody forgets that resurrection. We're just going to heaven. Yeah. Yeah, Ian and I were discussing that, which is not something I want to go here because then Bill will have to say, hey, get down. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, sit down. But it is interesting. It says that I may attain, obtain, attain the resurrection from the dead. Not go 
There's a resurrection. Which I, also with the Feast of Trumpets talks about, which is not the topic, but that is what we're looking for. And then in verse 12, it says, he says, and the, and the title in this subtitle was to press toward the goal. Not that I have already obtained or I am perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend, to be apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting these things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press forward the goal of, for the prize of the up, upward call of God in Jesus Christ. That is our goal. That's what we should focus on. For, yes, the other things are important because we can have multiple goals. Like at work, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. At work, we'll have a main goal. But then we have multiple goals that have to make that main goal work. You know, and, and that's the way it works. But the main goal has still got to be done. It doesn't matter. And thus, we, our goal is to focus to our resurrection in Jesus Christ and so forth. Don't let the world phase us. Don't let the world draw us in like Lot's wife and, you know, look back. I remember hearing, and this is just a side. It's a story, but it's a side and it's interesting. I heard when Worldwide broke up, I don't know if you all, you all may know more about it, that when whatever his name is came up and said that we they could have pork and keep Sunday and all that, half the congregation just went, we're free, and left. And I'm like, but that's not how this works. <laughs> it's not how this works. If God says, do it this way, it doesn't matter. That's right. It doesn't matter what a man tells you. It's what you do what God says. God says, you do the Sabbath, you do the Sabbath. Do the holy days, you do the holy days. You stop eating certain things, stop eating certain things. Okay, yes, Lord, whatever. You know, you don't question them. And that that's and that's the problem with looking back. You sometimes you'll want to go back when there is no going back. And then it says, Our citizenship in heaven. For in verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven. For which we also eagerly await for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our low, lowly body that it, that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the work, workings by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. We are looking for something better. We are to look forward. And what do we look forward to? Of course, I don't put the chapter, but I believe it's Revelation 11. Yep, that time it was good memory. I don't have it on here. Of all things, I didn't. Is that age? <laughs> I just forgot to put Revelation <laughs> I just realized I didn't put Revelation 11. This one I kind of know because I'm now trying to go through Revelation slowly and try to comprehend. There will be things I will not understand, but just like it says, try to understand. And Revelation 11 did hit. This is the seventh trump. I'm reading it for a reason because this is the day of trumpets. The seventh trump. It proclaims the kingdom of God. It is what our goal is. The seventh, the seventh angel sounded and there was a loud voice voices in heaven the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our lord and of jesus christ and he shall reign forever and ever now i'm looking forward to hearing that personally and even the elders in this was definitely looking forward because they said and the 24 elders who sat before god on his throne fell on their on their faces and worshiped them and said saying we give you thanks O lord god almighty the one who is who was and who is to come because you have taken your power your great power 
and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come in the time of the dead, and they shall be judged. And then this is where I want to focus on all of it, but this one specifically, and and that you shall reward your saints, the prophets, and your servants. Let me read that again. And you shall reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, great and small. That's going to be a glorious day. The Feast of Trumpets, life likes, okay, life likes to just throw stuff at us. Because, like, for example, when the holy days are over, we're going to have six months of nothing. Well, I didn't say nothing, but we don't have any holy days. It's going to, we're going to have to focus and be really focused. And with the Feast of Trumpets, we are allowed to stop for a day, focus on the true goal of life, which is to become righteous, follow Christ, try to work on being good people, righteousness, focus, first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It gives us opportunity to refocus ourselves back to what, and it doesn't mean we give up life, it just means that our main focus in life would be the kingdom of God, because... It will, because God will one day will take care of the problems that the world is having right now. We have a hope that the world does not have. And that focus, when we focus on it, gives us, and we proclaim it to others, helps us as well. And it keeps us focused on what Christ is doing and his purpose. So don't lose heart when you see the world go crazy like I've been seeing, because I keep up with all of it. Remember, our focus is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And one day, we'll have a reward we'll be so happy to have. And this will seem like nothing after that.